Hello, I'm Dieter Loosemore and welcome to Win Some Loosemore and you join me for a design discussion where I talk about elements within the creation of a board game and I want to focus a little bit more today on audience. I haven't done that so much within my, my list of things that make up uh, a board game. Um, an audience is a really interesting one when, when coming at it from a, a creative, a creator's standpoint, I suppose. Um, as a consumer, I am always pretty much looking for a solo mode, personally, because I enjoy firstly using that as a, as, a, as a means of teaching myself the game before I introduce it to other people, but also I don't always have people to play with, so I want something to do with myself. And then we're looking at the upper end of things, um, and ideally for me, five, five players tends to be more appealing on the box than, say, four. Now the traditional player count, if that's even true, um, was two to four. That seems to be the one that a lot of games adhered to. That that was the one, um, and that's fine. That works. That works really well. Um, but as the, as from my experience, only all of this is opinion. I don't need to tell you that. Uh, from my experience, as the the hobby has developed and grown, people are in larger groups and want to play with larger groups and not just the party social deduction kind of big eight to ten player or team game type things they want to be able to play the kinds of games that you might play with two or three people at the higher player counts you're seeing more um, companies include the five six maybe even seven um, players within a game and similarly as solo has has gained ground in the world particularly in recent times and there's been more call for solo, more companies are including it. There are companies now like the Automa Factory that specifically do solo designs. That's what they do. Um, and for, for, for more and more companies, it seems now, which is, which is fascinating. But all of this is just what I uh, react to when I look at the box. Uh, if I see one to five, um, great. If I see one to four, great. If I see two to four, cool, I'm going to do a little bit more research. There are some games that require a minimum of three and it just puts me off. I just I can't see myself getting that played regularly because I don't have the same regular access to a group that some people do. Um, particularly uh, at the moment when I've just moved and, and need to find new people. Um, but, as I say, that's just my initial reaction on the box. The, the more important question and the more important uh, facet, I'm going to use that word, I think I've used it incorrectly, factor, whatever it might be, some beginning with F, not that one, um, about it is appropriateness. As I've mentioned with production and all sorts of other things, the appropriateness of the player count is vital. Should it be a solo game? <laughs> Does it require some level of interaction between multiple people that a solo game is just a lesser experience? If it is, and you still want to include it because, like me, you might want it as like a teaching tool for help people get to know the game better, then do what some games do really well and say two to four solo mode included to go, okay, it is a two to four player game, that's what this is, but you can, because we've given you the tools to do that, do some stuff on your own. Okay, that works, brilliant. Should it be a two player game? I played, what, Tinner's Trail recently, uh, and the solo um, reenacts a, a two player game, essentially, uh, as, as best as it can. Um, and my experience of that, and then talking to other people that have played two player versions of it, it's just, because it's an auction game, because there's that kind of tension going on, two just doesn't work. Um, the classic game Catan, I didn't realise wasn't a two-player game until I tried to play two players and it was rubbish. And then realised it's it's not designed for that, it's three to five, that's what it's for. Um, and so some of these games that say, yes, oh yeah, you can play it two players, because that works. Um, and we've, we've limited the board in this way, or they don't limit anything at all and just go, for sure, just, just play. I would argue one of my favourite games, Scythe, um, 
I play it loads at two and I love it because I love the game and I love the process going through, but the experience from a two player game to a three to six player game is vastly different. In fact, I would say two, three and four, five and six. Um, I would play three and four personally, uh, maybe five at a push beyond that too long, too much. Um, but the two player, the threat of interaction, which is part of the fun of the combat, is this kind of almost cold war, who's going to do it, I don't really want to because it's going to cost me, but I need to to get myself over the line here. The amazing part of the game isn't there so much in a two player game, and unless you play with the Automa, the, uh, the robot um, that they've included uh, to, to be a third person, it's just too much. And in other games, I'll, again I'll come back to Tinner's Trail, even from seeing it at a one and two player kind of level, there's no way I want to play that at five. No way. The board isn't big enough. It's not, uh, there's, there's not enough to the game to make me want to have to go through battling four other people and the time that will take to do that. Now, generally, I would have stayed clear of higher player counts anyway, but then something like Concordia, which does go on long with five, or Vindication, which does go on long with five, I still love, still great, still will happily play at that, so it's appropriateness, what feels like it works, how does the dynamic shift from player count to player counts, this is one of those uh, design discussions where there's no correct answer, there's nothing right, there's just a couple of things that I think are wrong, um, so yes, sell it to who you want to. I want to see a solo, I want to see a higher player count, so I can use it in lots of different situations, but only if it works at each of those numbers and is fun. It doesn't have to be the same experience at each, but is it fun at each? Or have you scaled the game in a particular way? That's what I want to see. What do you think about player count? Do you have a preferred um, number that you're looking for, uh, one to five? three, four is kind of mine, but I do like larger player counts as well for games that suit it. Uh, and again, I'm kind of ignoring party games and those big kind of social deduction games where you can have 10, 12 people. Uh, that, that, that's a different thing to me. I'm talking about more the kind of standard Euro or Ameritrash kind of games that we've spoken about before. Uh, party games are a whole different category, which should be lots of people because it's, that's a lot of fun. What are you looking for? What kind of games do you like? What examples do you have of games that sell you that they're one thing and they really shouldn't be? I love hearing those kind of things, so do stick them down in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. Do subscribe if you don't already and hit the bell icon to stay updated when I put out new things. Do find me on social media. You can search Win Some Loose More on all your usual platforms and you will find me. It would be great to hear from you. Thank you very much. I've been Dita for Win Some Loose More. Bye.